Hi, welcome back to the Wandering Wesleyan. This is uh, Chaplain Greg, and uh, we are continuing and st starting the end game for our Walking in the Word series today. We're going to be talking about uh, John's letters and uh, the book of Revelation, and uh, then next week we will talk about the Gospel of John. Um, but first I want to talk, this is kind of an extra added bonus thing. This is what happened to the disciples and some of the characters in the, in, in the New Testament story after the New Testament was written. Um, because it's, it's fascinating, because Jesus promised, he promised his followers that they were going to suffer. He promised them that they're going to endure hardships, but he also promised them that he would empower them, give them authority, and be with them until their time was passed. So what happened? Andrew, Peter's brother, he actually traveled to Russia, and these are so. Let me let me just clarify here. A lot of this is tradition. We don't have a lot of hard evidence that this these stories actually happened, but it's it's tradition that comes out of the second century church. And lacking hard evidence to counter it, tradition is always something that you can rely on as being probably accurate. So maybe this happened, maybe it didn't, more likely it did, but it's tradition. So having said that, Andrew traveled to Russia called the Land of the Man-Eaters, and he was crucified there. Thomas went to Martoma, India, and uh, he was speared by the natives there. In fact, the uh, early Christian church, the Christians in India, say that they have their faith because of, the, because of Thomas, who uh, came to their land. Matthew, he traveled to Persia, also known as Iran, and Ethiopia, and in Ethiopia he was stabbed. And that's how he died. Bartholomew, he was a companion with Thomas. And he was martyred in one of the countries he traveled to. Uh, India, Armenia, Ethiopia, South Southern Arabia. Um, he was martyred in one of those countries. Thaddeus was martyred by crucifixion in Edessa, which is now part of Turkey. Jacob, son of Alphaeus. So that would be, if you watch The Chosen, uh, Little James. Uh, he was stoned in Syria. Simon the Zealot. Again, if you watch The Chosen, Z. Uh, Simon the Zealot. He ministered in Persia, Iran, and was crucified for not sacrificing to a local sun god. Matthias. And he, was the he was the disciple that was chosen to replace Judas. He traveled with Andrew to Syria. Andrew went on to Russia after uh, Matthias was burned to death in Syria. John, James's brother, son of De Zebedee, and whose letters we're going to be talking about, became bishop of Ephesus in the, in the late first century, eventually exiled to the island of Patmos, and he's said to have escaped being boiled in oil by the Romans. He died a normal death well into his 90s. And several of the second generation church fathers who wrote into the second century were disciples of John. Uh, Judas, brother of Jesus, uh, wrote the book of Jude. Uh, no, that's Judah. So Judas took over leadership of the Jerusalem church in Jerusalem after his brother James, Jacob, was martyred somewhere around 70 AD. Uh, Jacob, John's brother, James, killed in Acts 12, 1, probably beheaded like John the Baptist. Jacob, the brother of Jesus, James, stoned by the Pharisees, 62 or 69. Uh, his sisters were also stoned. Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Okay, they moved to Gaul, which is um, in part of Turkey, and then to Cyprus, where Lazarus became bishop of Cyprus. 
and was beheaded there. They've since found his gravestone. Archaeologists have. And on it, it reads, Lazarus, twice dead, friend of Jesus. That is so cool. Philip was crucified upside down in Syria. Peter, crucified upside down in Rome. Paul, beheaded in Rome. Mark, he went to Alexandria, Egypt, was tied up uh, by the feet and drug around the city by horses for two days. Luke, seems he died a natural death at age 84 in Thebes. And Thebes is in central Greece. Uh, Mary Magdalene, she died a martyr in Ephesus while John was bishop. Mary, the mother of Jesus, lived with John until her death of natural causes. Um, Roman Catholic friends, you believe something a little different, that she was bodily assumed into heaven. Unfortunately, no Christian writers of the early church support this. It's a myth that started in the Middle Ages. So that that's kind of what happened, uh, you know, the Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. So let's get into the writings of John. Um, John was the apostle that Jesus loved. Um, when we talk about the writings of John, sometimes it, with academics, things get a little unclear. Um, early church fathers such as Papias, Polycarp, were, were disciples of John, Clement, was also a disciple of John. Polycrates, Bishop of Ephesus after of John, was also a disciple of his. They all attest that it's John, the brother of James, son of Zebedee, who, um, who wrote all of these books. The writing style and grammar are very similar amongst all of them. Um, so who was John? Uh, he was one of the three Christian church leaders with his brother James and Simon Peter um, who were chosen by Jesus many times to do stuff that the other disciples didn't do. Uh, there's a theory that this was a different John, John the Elder, um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, there is also a theory that John's disciples wrote these books. Eh, probably not. Um, they might have helped him in his advanced age to write these, but more than likely, this is coming from John, brother of James, son of Zebedee. Tradition states that he was boiled in oil under Nero's persecution and survived miraculously. Um, that he was exiled to the island of Patmos, as he writes in uh, his book of Revelation. He wrote the gospel along with his letters and Revelation more than likely while he was exiled in Patmos. John eventually, after Emperor Domitian died, settled in Ephesus, where he more widely distributed his writings to the house churches, in that Roman capital of Asia. So Ephesus was a huge city that was second only to Rome and eventually would eclipse Rome and only be dwarfed by what would later become Constantinople. So Ephesus was, being bishop in Ephesus was a big deal. So let's talk about John's letters. Okay, all three letters, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, were written in response to heresy that were invading the Ephesus, Ephesus house churches. So 1 John, which like Hebrews, like Romans, reads more of a sermon than anything else, um, but it was written to the house churches to emphasize that they still need to follow Jesus. The emphasis on God as being light and love. These are the themes that go through 1 John. Please try again. Ignore Siri, please. Second John, written to a specific house church. So this, we're going from all the churches in Ephesus to a specific house church. It's a warning to the church about the heretics mentioned in First John and to don't offer them support. 
Now, third John, now we're narrowing it down even more. All the churches, one church, now one person. Third John was written to a specific person named Gaius. John tells him to welcome faithful missionaries and ignore the heretics. And to um, welcome these, these missionaries warmly. So that brings us to Revelation. Okay? Revelation. Ah. That's a tough book. It's a tough read. It's, um, it's a book that has caused lots of division when it really shouldn't. Revelation... It, which, which is also called the Apocalypse, that's what John called it, is a vision that John gave, that God gave John, um, about lots of different things. But primarily, it was a vision given to John so that the early church, under persecution, would have hope during its persecution. Once... You read John's Apocalypse, Revelation, with that context, it becomes a much different book than some of the interpretations that are given today by our disp dispensationalist brothers and sisters. If you read Revelation with a series of charts and graphs showing that this will happen, then that will happen, then this will happen, then Jesus will return, and then this will happen, then Jesus will return again, or something along those lines, I truly believe you're reading it wrong. You're not getting what John is telling you. John is giving hope and is giving strength and comfort to a persecuted church. Now, having said that, Having said that, Revelation also talks about future events, but it does so in apocalyptic, prophetic poetry. Remember our genres. You have to read genres the way they were intended to be read. And if you read Revelation literally, you are misreading the genre involved. Poetic, prophetic apocalyptic writing. What do I mean by that? It's poetic. It's a, there are many poems throughout the apocalypse. It's prophetic. It is telling things about the future, but it's also prophetic in that it's offering hope and encouragement to a persecuted church. And it's apocalyptic. Now, apocalyptic writing was a specific genre in the ancient world. It uses numbers, it uses fantastic imagery, it uses all kinds of um, monsters and critters in order to talk about specific subjects. So if you take Revelation literally, then you are doing the thing that John does not want you to do, and that's look at the deeper meaning of the apocalypse. Now I'm going to put in the show notes... Um, the, the videos, the two videos that the Bible Project did for Revelation, I can't improve on it. It is, they are so good, and they really give the idea behind what Revelation is all about. Um, it is an encouraging book to read. A lot of people, see, there are two different ways of interpreting Revelation wrongly the first one is well you know it's all complicated and there's a bunch of weird stuff in there so maybe we'll just put it aside and not read it and ignore it because nobody really is supposed to know what it means that's wrong the second way of reading it is literal and this is going to happen then that's going to happen then that's going to happen that's a wrong way of reading it as well. Now, I'm going to call an audible here. I said uh, that I would finish up next week with our series with um, 
uh, with the the with John's gospel, but I, I'm going to actually put up a sermon, and that sermon is a sermon I gave on uh, Revelation. It was a sermon series that was done about the last days. Uh, my pastor uh, Brandon Candy called it the Return of the King. I love that title, um, not only because I'm a Tolkien fan, but because it it really is all about the Return of the King. Uh, so look for that sermon next week. And uh, following that, we will finish up with the Gospel of John. But until then, this is Chaplain Greg. I, I hope you're enjoying this series. Um, when we finish this series, uh, we'll probably have a few sermons that have to deal uh, with evangelism. Um, but until then, um, this is Chaplain Greg. If you like this, please like and subscribe. And uh, we'll talk next week. God bless.